AccuCare Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine in Brick, New Jersey offers a state-of-the-art facility with all the best and current treatments. With athletic trainers, massage therapists, and doctors of physical therapy, AccuCare has everything you need to stay healthy and perform at the highest level. Cupping, stretching, laser therapy, compression boots, and a full-body cryo chamber are just some of what you can expect at AccuCare. Check out their website and social media links in my bio. No prescription is needed to see them. So so call them today and start feeling and performing at your best. Again, thank you to AccuCare for sponsoring the Shore Football Report. Everyone and welcome to the AccuCare High School Football Preview Show, Monmouth County Edition. Today, we are going to talk Red Bank Regional Buccaneers football with two outstanding coaches, the head coach, Shane Fallon, to my left, and in the middle, the assistant head coach, quarterback, offensive coordinator, Noel Cavanaugh. That, guys, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Rob. Awesome, man. I'm excited to talk some Buccaneers football, but before we do, I got to brag about my addition to my team. I don't know if you heard, I now have a sponsor, AccuCare and Brick, our physical therapy and sports medicine. Pam Anthony's outstanding, the founder and owner, got a great view of athletics. And you both know that it is important because I think you had some injuries last year to keep your athletes healthy on the field on Friday, Saturdays, right? Absolutely. <laughs> very, very important. She, she's got the state of the art equipment. Um, and she educates the kids, rehabilitation, recovery, all the nine yards of stuff like there. And uh, as a coach for me, I, I, I'm i not an expert. I'd throw it right to her if I was still coach right there. And she'll be involved in our program throughout the whole year and wants to be involved in everybody's communities. The other hire was a guy uh, I thought was uh, bigger news than LeBron James. The mystery hire was Scott Stump is now with the Shore Football Report. And he likes to write, and I don't like to write, so we're a perfect couple. And he's excited about following guys like you guys, and he's going to make things a lot more fun for the kids, I think. Nobody knows him, though. These young kids don't know Scott Stump. They don't even know anything that happened last week. So how would they know Stump, who has been away for seven years? Shane, you remember he was following – Well, yeah, he was around with you in 2010 when you were at Rumson, right? Oh, he was around longer than that. Scott, yeah. Don't let Scott fool you and pretend <laughs> that he's younger than he is. All right. So Scott, Scott uh, is a, a a wise veteran and knows what he's doing, and uh, he knows the landscape of the short conference. And uh, you know, I know everybody's excited to have him back and providing coverage, and yeah. uh, he'll be a great addition uh, to everything that you're building. Yeah, he's he's excited. So we got him on a on a good side right there. Now let's talk you two. I'm excited, man. I'm excited that you brought uh, Noel on here, too. I want to introduce you guys. Um, Shane, this is your 18th season, so your experience. I want to say you're old. Um, second season at Red Bank. You've already accomplished. You already have 100 wins. You have 112. You have five division championships and one state title. And you're bringing a, a wealth of experience and success to the Red Bank football program. I liked what was happening at the end of the year. You guys were gaining a lot of momentum. Um, and talking to you the other day, you're real excited about this season. Yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, year one is always a transition year, coming in with a new coaching staff and, you know, just, you know, getting your program and culture, you know, kind of established and the expectations and, 
Um, you know, we were able to do that last year. Our seniors did a great job for us in terms of providing leadership for our kids. And they were great character kids and we're going to miss them terribly. Um, but the one thing we have noticed this summer is just there's just so much more familiarity with our coaching staff and uh, with our players in terms of uh, what the expectations are, the terminology that we're using, um, how our practice structure is run. Um, every, you know, we've kind of hit the ground running. We've had a very productive summer. Um, we're, as a coaching staff, very happy with where we're at at this point compared to a year ago. Um, but those are all expectations that you would expect with any second year coach going into, you know, being, you know, you know, with their program. So, um, you know, but like I said, uh, you know, we're, we're very excited with uh, the momentum that, you know, coming off year one, we're sure we were disappointed in our overall record, but we weren't disappointed in what we were able to accomplish in terms of building a program and the success that we think we're going to be able to have over the coming years. So, um, you know, we're head, we'll be heading in the right direction. That's for sure. And I know you know how to build programs. You did it at Rumson. You won a state championship in 2010. Um, very well respected coach in the short conference. And, you know, me being from Ocean County and Monmouth County, uh, you know, I always took a lot of stuff from what you did. You were at Neptune for, you were at Rumson for 15 years, right? Correct. And then Neptune for one and then Red Bank at two. So good. Here's my question to you. Do you take some of the stuff that you did at Rumson with you right here? Or are you adapting anything you've done in the past? I, yeah, I think you you have to do, first of all. Um, you know, and I did the same thing when I went to Neptune for, uh, you know, the year I was there. Um, you know, I think that you can't just replicate what we were able to do at Rumson Fairhaven. Um, you, you know, that's a process. And it takes a while to get things, you know, to that point. Um, so I, you know, I think that um, you have to take each circumstance and situation, um, and you know, you have to be able to, as a coach, adapt to, um, you know, all, you know, what that school, uh, you know, has, and, and and what they allow you to do, um, and your talent level, and 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 the, and the type of kid that you're coaching, um, and I think that um, you know, we've been able to do that. You know, I. I one of the things I didn't want to do is just come in and say, okay, I'm doing every single thing that I did at Rumsen Fairhaven because that would have been a mistake. Um, you know, and, and, um, you know, uh, I've been able to put a coaching staff together with guys that I'm familiar with guys that I've developed relationships with, but not necessarily guys that coach with me at Rumsen Fairhaven, uh, you know, that were in my, you know, past experiences there because let's face it, um, you, you don't leave there, you know, so a lot of those assistant coaches that coached with me are still at Rumsen Fairhaven and very happy. And that continuity that they provide, you know, allows for, you know, that program and those kids to just continue to be successful because they have, you know, it, it, it everybody rowing in the right direction. And, and, you know, we're trying to do the same thing here at Red Bank Regional from that standpoint mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, getting people to understand how important the weight room is, to understand how important, uh, you know, game day atmosphere is to the community, um, to understand, you know, how uh, our practices need to be and what we expect of our kids in practice, um, you know, how to handle success and how to handle losing, you know, because all of those things are important. Mm -hmm. you know, in terms of building our kids, you know, mental makeup and mindset, and, you know, um, there's so many ways you can win or lose a football game. And, uh, you know, the mental aspect always plays into it uh, nowadays. So um, as a coach, you know, I think that you have to be smart enough to adapt. And I've done that. And part of the reason I brought Noel in with me was, you know, I saw how he saw things, um, you know, from the defensive perspective. Uh, and I wanted him to come with me to Red Bank Regional um, because I knew the type of offense that we wanted to run and how we wanted to attack people. Um, and his past experiences working with, you know, Mark Ciccatelli, yeah. um, you know, were exactly what I was looking for. Um, you know, I have enough connections in the short conference that I could have brought in, you know, an established offensive coordinator mm -hmm. from this school or mm -hmm. this school or that, or, you know, but that wasn't what I was looking to do. Um, and I also wasn't looking to just come in and replicate the offense that I ran at, at Rumson Fairhaven that may not work or, or 
to me what you know best suits my kids talent level here at Red Bank Regional. So, uh, you know, the whole process, uh, I'm very happy with where we're at with our coaching staff and yeah. where our kids are at. The one thing I liked about what you did at Rumson was you get a lot of people involved, coaches and players to platoon. You started something there that they don't they don't want to change. I, when I talked to Jerry Schulte last year, he said, you you put that in and he doesn't want to change it. And that's a credit to you and what you do with your coaches. And I know if there's a guy at Red Bank that are even, one's playing a heavy offense, one's playing heavy defense, and that's that. But you get a lot of guys involved. You do. Yeah. I mean, increasing your participation numbers is half the battle. Once you increase your participation numbers, you have competition in practice. And uh, that competition allows you, it empowers you as a head coach, you know, um, and the kids know, look, if I'm not working hard, the guy behind me is going to beat me out or the guy behind me is going to earn playing time, um, you know, and, and that's, you know, it's so important, um, you know, that they have to practice hard every day uh, and compete every day to get better. Uh, you know, I, I mean, at some point, you know, when when you start getting further into the season, you 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 know, we always preach to our kids that you're competing against yourselves. You know that it's not about our opponent; it's about us, and it's about if we practice well, prepare well, and do our job, we'll be successful. You know, especially as you get later in the year and you go into playoffs and mm -hmm. things like that. So, uh, you know, that expectation level is always going to be there the goal and the bar, you know, you set it at a certain level and you expect them to perform there. Um, but the two platoon system, you know, yeah, it's certainly a way to get a number of kids involved, getting a, a number of kids with depth as well, you know, because if you have 22 starters and then you have 22 immediate backups who are one play away from going into the game, uh, you know, it also, I think, impacts your special teams and makes your special teams that much better because you have a kid who's just a defensive player who's playing special teams as well. And, um, you know, I think that that's, you know, just a recipe that's worked. We're not there yet at Red Bank Regional in terms of our depth and our numbers, but we'll get there over the coming years, um, you know, and, um, you know, we'll adjust accordingly as we go. But right now we have a number of kids that do go both ways. We have other kids that are one way players and we rest them on certain, you know, series offensively or defensively. And we'll continue to do that because it'll just give us the best, best chance to win. Thanks, Coach. Um, coach, now I'm glad you br you brought Coach uh, Kavanaugh on. Coach, thanks for coming on. I know all about you. I know our connection is Craig Sicardo, good friend of mine. I talk to him three, four times a day. Um, Kevin Smith, one of my loyal assistant coaches for years. Great guy. Great coach. Through the years, when they mention your name, great guy, loyal, positive, and such knowledgeable. You are so knowledgeable and you're unique. You've been a coordinator on the one side and the other side, defense and offense. You also are an author, something I'm never going to do because I don't pick up a pen, but you wrote two books. I want you to explain that after we talk about your resume, because I think that's real interesting. You wrote an offensive book and a defensive book. Not too many people can say that at all, right? Yep. Good. All right. So coach, let, let me just run it down and, Correct me if I'm wrong with it. Will, you you were you were a GA at Al, Albright University, right? No, no, nope, I got to correct you already. Uh, Averett University. Averitt. It's a it's a Division three oh. school in Danville, Virginia. Okay, two, Averitt for two years. Okay, my bad. And then you went to Freehold with Coach Mark Ciccatelli for three years, correct? Yeah. Yep. And you won two state titles. Yeah, that's incredible. 2010, and my brother, uh, he's a coach at Friel Borough. He's all OC at Friel Borough now. Um, was the quarterback in 2008, so that was kind yeah. of fun. Yeah, he was a good one too, yeah. really good one. From there, you went to Neptune for three years. You you went to two finals. You won one state championship there. So you already got three state championships under your belt in your first six years. God, that's pretty good. All right, good. All right. Then you went to St. John Vianney and you got a chance to coach Anthony Brown, the outstanding quarterback that went on later on to play at Oregon. So you yep. played – yeah. From there, you took a year You took a year off. You went with L.J. Clark for two years, was a defensive coordinator, made the playoffs twice, so and helped out the Lakewood program. And then you went back to Neptune um, with, uh, for two years, correct? Correct. And then you went – and now you're here at Red Bank – as the offensive coordinator and assistant head coach. And boy, you bring a wealth of experience. But again, everywhere you go, 
people speak so highly of you as a loyal assistant coach. When I talk to you in the offseason, you're excited about your program and what you do, the vision of what you're doing at Red Bank. Tell me your experience working with Coach Fallon and what you guys are, are doing, the great things you're doing at Red Bank. Well, I think, first of all, um, you know, I, I met Coach Fallon a long time ago um, uh, through those connections at Modern Day with Coach Sicardo and, um, yeah. you know, with Coach Chicatelli. And I uh, always had a lot of respect for Coach Fallon, um, his program that he built. Um, and, you know, always just like talking to him. You know, we're both Irish guys. Mm -hmm. I just came back from Ireland. Yeah. So, um, you know, we have that in common. But, you know, um, in working with him, uh, I really, you know, I, I really respect him. Um, because he, he, he bounces ideas off you. He kind of tells you, Hey, listen, um, you know, let's think about this. And maybe I wasn't thinking about those type of things. And, you know, and I ended up thinking more like a head coach because of coach Fallon, um, in, in sort of constructing practice, uh, how we're going to talk to kids, what we're going to say to kids. Um, and he's kind of made me sort of a better coach in that respect. Um, you know, it's easy to just focus on one thing, being a wide receiver coach, a D coordinator, whatever. Um, but when you have to start thinking about those other things, I think it gets um, gets more difficult. But Coach Fallon's helped me along the way with that, and I really appreciate it. Um, we have a great sort of like mentally, we kind of think the same with our scheme and how we want to, uh, you know, attack people. Uh, last night he called me about a certain situation. Hey, let's do this personnel group. And I was like, that's part you read my mind. Like it was just, so we kind of are on the same page with what we're doing. Um, we're really excited about this season and um, it, it should be, it should be a lot of fun. Nice. Now tell me a little bit about you as a writer and coach Fallon calls your offense to K gun. I want to know how that came about, but you wrote about the empty veer run and then your defense, multiple hybrid three, three, five defense. What made yeah. you want to write books? Well, you know, I think that, like, um, you know, as you, you're you're going through, you know, first of all, you as a coach, I want to have this down, and I, I want to have it in one spot, um, and I want to, you know, I don't want to forget anything. Mm -hmm. So having it in writing and putting it down there was kind of important to me as a coach. But it was also like, you know what? Why not? Why can't I write a book? You know, it's not that difficult. Go on Amazon and you just start doing it. Um, and you know, COVID. We had a lot of more time to think about these right. things. So, you know, um, I just said, you know what, I'm going to do it. Um, and then once I did it once, it was easy to do it again. Um, really, though, like a lot of the schemes and the things, you know, nothing is like I thought of. Like this is all stuff that I've learned from really great coaches mm -hmm. um, along the way. You know, Coach Ciccatelli, Coach Fallon, you know, I mean, a, a lot of guys throughout the years, Coach Dunlovey from, from Averitt, uh, Coach Clark, like, all of those things that are in the books, kind of, I've um, I've taken a little bit of what they do and put it in there. A little bit of what they do, put it in there. So um, nothing is just. I'm like, you know, I made it up. It's just, it's really. I've been around a lot of great guys, and um, kind of wanted to put it all on paper. Coach, when I talked to Craig again, he's a good friend of mine. And when Matter Day closed, he right away he thought of all his tight knit coaches out there. Mentioned your name, of course, Kevin Smith. John Tierney, because you guys are so close, your fraternity at Matter Day. And again, it sh says a lot for you because you're very loyal to this day, too. W coaching, uh, playing under Coach Sicardo, did that help you develop as a coach? Absolutely. I mean, Coach Sicardo, uh, it was sort of like a father figure to me growing up. Um, and, you know, within football, uh, he taught me so many lessons that, that are just so valuable. Um, of not only how to play football, but how to be a man and how to work hard through adversity and things like that. Um, I owe him a ton. Um, and I wrote it in the books with the dedication pages and things like that. But, you know, it's just never enough. Like he's an unbelievable role model to me and will always be as well as Coach Ciccatelli, um, you know, coaching with those two guys, you know, growing up in football like I, i've been blessed and now now to be along with coach fallon like you know i, I don't know if I, you can find a better scenario well coach you were right about this guy he is a good guy we've talked many times in the off season you're excited about your staff coach and i want to know more about red bank football today is that all right 
You guys ready to talk Red Bank football? Absolutely. Good. All right, Coach, I'm going to whip that thing off. Let's get back to normal. No more COVID, no more pods, no more temperature checks at all. Off seasons were crazy for the last two years. Seniors weren't able to work out. And the last time they worked out was after their freshman football season. So they haven't had guys to look look at in the, in the, in the past of how to do things right in the off season. So you had to reteach or install your off season workouts this year. All right. Tell me what a normal red bank football off season looks like under your direction coach. Well, I mean, you know, first of all, I'm a big believer in multi-sport athletes. So I'm not the, um, you know, football coach that wants my players to just play football and then lift you know, the three other seasons. Um, you know, I, I want them to play a second sport and participate and compete because mm-hmm. I also think that competition translates, you know, whether a kid is shooting a pressure packed foul shot with uh, down one and you're going to the foul line with, you know, two seconds left in the game with a chance to shoot two free throws to tie it or win it. I think that matters. You know, I think same thing in baseball. If you have to make a big pitch or you get a big hit, um, you know, you're up in those scenarios. So I, I think, you know, the importance of kids competing in multi-sports, I think, is is uh, important. I've always been a big believer in that. That will never change. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so we encourage our kids to participate in a winter or a spring sport here at Red Bank Regional. And they did that, you know, um, and the kids that weren't participating in a sport were in the weight room. Our strength and conditioning coach, Jack Provine does a great job here at Red Bank Regional. He's a teacher in the building. He trains all of our student athletes. A fantastic investment that the school and and commitment that the school has made, you know, to the, um, you know, health, uh, you know, to the health and fitness and and strength and conditioning and well-being, overall well-being of all of our student athletes, you know, male and female here at Red Bank Regional. And, you know, Coach Provine does a fantastic job with that. Uh, Coach TK, Tyler Karalev, uh, who's on our coaching staff, and Adam Boberts, who uh, is one of our freshman assistant coaches as well. Uh, they did a great job, too, assisting in the weight room uh, in the winter and spring and summer. Um, you know, so our, our kids have had a good off-season program, uh, you know, lifting, you know, four days a week. Some of the kids, other kids are three days a week. Um, some kids are two days a week where they're lifting in season with their winter or spring team, uh, where, you know, I think that's one of the things that I was very happy about is like a lot of our coaches here at Red Bank Regional believe in strength and conditioning during the season yeah. and maintaining some sort of fitness <laughs> level you know, the injury prevention and things like that. So your body's not wearing down as you go through the season. Um, You know, so it it has helped us overall from that standpoint, because we have coaches that philosophically buy into, uh, you know, what uh, Coach Provine's doing uh, in our weight room. And, uh, you know, we just hope for the next few years to come that we'll continue to see, you know, it it make a difference. And, um, you know, we'll continue to, to build on that. Um, just like anything else, as you go through it, and kids see results, the buy-in is even more. And that's how you want the buy-in to be. You don't want the buy-in to be with threats. You need to come to the weight room or else. Uh, you know, uh, for, for us, you know, we want there's value in our kids uh, learning as they go through it and earning it. And, um, you know, and just like anything else, we have kids who have made outstanding strides in the weight room and gotten so much stronger or they've their goal was to maybe put some weight on. And we've had other kids that their their goal might have been to lose a couple of pounds and, you know, transform their body that way. Um, And we've had kids that have been able to do both. So uh, and that's a credit to Coach Provine and and the system that he has in place. Um, you know, I've worked, um, you know, with some fantastic strength and conditioning people over the years. Um, you know, Rob Ork at, uh, at Rumson Fairhaven, uh, Matt Cooney, who we had hired, uh, at Holmdale when I was the athletic director there and what a difference he made for Jeff Rainus and the Holmdale Hornets, you know, football program, but all of their programs over there at mm-hmm. Holmdale. You know, and then I went to Neptune for the one year and had Tom Walsh, who was outstanding in the weight room with the kids at Neptune, you know, and then this year, you know, I've been this past year, you know, being able to come to Red Bank Regional and uh, have a great working relationship with Jack Provine. Um, it's just so 
so valuable to have that piece in place. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that the Red Bank Regional uh, Board of Education and Administration saw the value in that and have had that in place for a number of years prior to me even coming here. And uh, I got to see firsthand the difference that it's making. I think it's important what you said. First of all, you got a trainer that's devoted to the strength and conditioning 100%. So while you're doing other things and still doing it too with them, Jack Provine is there for all the athletes, right? Mm -hmm. And with that being done said, having coaches in your school that are also bought in from other sports just makes your job easier because when you're sending them to basketball, wrestling, baseball, you know they're in good hands Only not only with their coaching for that sport, but they're also getting better as, as athletes in the weight room. That's awesome. All right, Coach Fallon, let's hear the list of names of your coaches for this season. All right. Well, uh, you know, obviously we have uh, Noel Cavanaugh, who, you know, is coaching our quarterbacks again and is our offensive coordinator. And mm -hmm. Noel does a great job, you know, putting in a game plan and just, uh, you know, trying to figure out ways to, uh, you know, annoy opposing defensive coordinators and put our kids in the best position to, uh, you know, be successful. Um, so, you know, we felt he did a good job last year and we're going to continue to grow with that and, and, and let that, you know, get even better this year. We have a good nucleus of kids coming back. Um, Bill Peach uh, is our defensive coordinator. Uh, you know, Bill uh, was a longtime assistant coach with Chris Barnes uh, at Wall and uh, came over and was an assistant coach with me at Neptune, um, you know, and, and, and coaching defensive line uh, and has been coaching linebackers and coordinating our defense here at Red Bank Regional. Um, passionate guy, uh, intense, um, very good work ethic, watches a ton of film and knows how he wants to defend opposing teams. And, uh, you know, he kind of imposes his will on our defense and our kids in turn, you know, kind of take on his persona and his mentality um, in terms of trying to play as physical as we can be and not get beat at the point of attack, and, um, you know, just be sound defensively. So, uh, you know, we're hoping to, you know, make some strides uh, this year. You know, our kids are a year older, a year stronger, and, um, you know, we're, we're, we're hoping to see those gains, um, you know, and then I have Chris Barnes as an assistant coach as well, who works with our running backs mm -hmm. and works with our defensive backs. Uh, you know, and Chris is such, you know, a, an experienced, uh, wise, uh, you know, co football coach, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, outstanding head coach, you know, uh, his ability, you know, uh, to add input on the offensive side of the ball and bounce ideas off of and, uh, you know, and even defensively uh, tell you, you know, what, what annoys him when he's on the offensive side of the ball. Um, you know, Coach Barnes, his game day adjustments, his experience that he brings to the table in practice and in the games uh it's just it's awesome you know so having coach barnes on staff is great um you know and then we have john legier uh john legier was with me years ago um at rumson fairhaven in the early 2000s you know he was my defensive coordinator for like four years um then uh you know he ended up having a job transfer and his family moved and they moved down the wall and uh, he was able to latch on and get a job with uh, with Coach Barnes and, uh, you know, and, and John's back coaching, you know, with me in year two here at Red Bank Regional. Um, you know, he's coaching our defensive backs and coordinating our special teams. Very knowledgeable football guy, relates very well to our kids, um, you know, has a good rapport with our student athletes. Um, so he's, a, he's just been a great addition. Um, you know, and then we have uh, some of our homegrown Red Bank Regional guys that played here that are alumni, you know, and Tyler Karalevich, TK, Coach TK, um, he uh, is coaches our defensive line, does a great job in the weight room as well with our kids, uh, you know, takes a great deal of pride in Red Bank Regional having played here, you know, he played for Coach Giglio in the, uh, you know, in the uh, mid 2000s around 2000 you know uh 9 10 11 somewhere in that area and um you know so he's been he's been a great addition for us uh jeff mass who's a red bank regional graduate offensive line uh guy um you know jeff uh you know brings experience to the table from that standpoint um you know he has a good rapport with our offensive linemen does a good job in the weight room as well um you know, Jeff is a very uh, bright guy who, uh, 
you know, sees things, you know, as an offensive line uh, person, you know, whether it's a former player or a, a now a coach, um, you know, he knows how he wants to attack a defensive line and a front seven or front eight and what he wants to do to them. Um, so he's been uh, worked very well with, uh, you know, Coach Cav um, in terms of st installing game plans each week and things like that. And, and telling me what they like and they don't like against opposing teams. Um, so, you know, they, they, those guys have been, you know, gr great additions from that standpoint. Um, and then our freshman coaches where, you know, we have uh, two guys that are in house in here in Red Bank Regional who I, you know, developed a good rapport with over the last year, getting to know them more and more in the building, uh, Adam Boberts and uh, Chris Leroy. And um, they're perfect together. They blend well. They work really well together. There's great chemistry between the two of them. Um, you know, they both are aligned with, uh, you know, how they want to handle the freshman program regarding playing time, regarding discipline, mm -hmm. uh, regarding, uh, you know, the when to push the kids, when to back off a little bit, uh, you know, how they want to install the offense or defense over the summer, um, you know, so you know, having them in the building and having two you know, guys that you can bounce ideas off of and talk to during the school day, um, they've been, you know, a great addition. I'm really pleased with both of them. So, um, you know, so, you know, that's our coaching staff. And then we have Christina Emmerich, who is our trainer. Uh, Christina Emmerich is one of the veteran trainers uh, in the state of New Jersey. Um, you know, she's on every NJSIA athletic training committee that they have. Uh, you know, she helped write you know, all of the, the uh, heat acclimation and, mm. you know, and, and the cool, cool and the, uh, cold as well. Um, but she is uh, as knowledgeable as they get. And like I said, I've been fortunate in my career, not only to work with some great mm. uh, weight room people, strength and conditioning coaches, but also some outstanding athletic, athletic trainers um, in my time at all of my stops, uh, whether it was, you know, at Rumson Fairhaven or Holmdel, mm -hmm. uh, Neptune, and uh, now here at Red Bank Regional, and Christina Emmerich is uh, just uh, such a fantastic, um, you know, piece to the puzzle here for Red Bank Regional. She's uh, as good as they get. Coach, that's a great staff. And I just want to say, Noel, the way he's talking about his staff here, he does that on the phone too. He loves his staff. He's And I'm glad you're here to speak because this is a segment where I break down the coaching staff and talk about one person or another, and that's where you come in. So since you're here, so a couple of things I want to ask you. First, you've been on offense and defense. You've been a coordinator on both sides of the ball. What, what do you like the best? Do you like offense or defense? I know the answer to what you're going to you know, tell me right now. But well, I mean, it's, it's obviously uh, there's, there's no better feeling um, than, than really shutting an opponent down when you're a defensive coordinator. It's amazing. But, you know, offense, it's just, you know, it's just so much fun, you know, and, and, um, you know, the, I, I really, I, honestly, I love both. Um, right now I'm into offense. Um, right. but you know, I've done both <laughs> and I've enjoyed both, um, thoroughly. So it, it's a tough question, tough question for me, but, uh, right now it's, it's all offense. For me. But you know, to be a successful offensive coordinator, you need to know what the defensive minds are thinking. So yeah, you gotta, I think that's helped me yeah. a little bit with um with just just knowing what I want to do and and uh, especially after our first year we were installing stuff uh, we were learning our kids we were learning what they do well what they don't and that took time um and now we, we have a better feel for the, our kids and um what they do well and maybe what we should avoid what we should do um but also like having that knowledge for you know what works against this defense when we yeah. want to see. You know, when we want to go strong, when we want to go weak, um, how we want to block things. I think that's really helped me um, as just a football coach. But talking to you a couple of weeks ago on the phone, I could tell that you were kind of thinking what out of the box, what defenses would be doing to your unique style of offense, the K-gun, the K-gun. You're very, very, um, you know, you're very good with, with, with being creative with your stuff that you do. Um, but I think that you being a defensive guy and an aggressive guy, with your defense, it's only going to make you better offensively because you like driving people crazy with the schemes you're doing with RPOs, make the defense wrong, right? 
and the defensive yeah. guys want to make you crazy by not knowing what's going on. So I think what you have built in is going to be something that's going to drive defenses crazy, especially with the athletes we're going to talk about later that you have. So. <laughs> All right, Coach, to the left is your 2022 football schedule. To the right is the Freedom Division. I want to hear what you think about your schedule, and then I just want to talk just briefly about your new Freedom Division. Go ahead. Well, I mean, you know, I think that um, – we like the schedule from the standpoint of we think it's a uh, fair and a um, competitive schedule. You know, I don't think there's a game uh, on there that we're a heavy underdog. And I don't think there's a game on there that we're a, a huge favorite. You know, I think we're going to be in competitive football games uh, week in, week out. Um, and I think most of the coaches in our division would probably agree with that statement. Mm -hmm. um, last year, um, you know, we played a couple of the teams that are once again in our division. Uh, you know, we had a, a great game against Brick Memorial late in the season. Um, back and forth, game could have gone either way, and we were fortunate enough to make a few plays and come out of there with, you know, a touchdown victory. Um, but, you know, that's a game that, you know, we know is going to be competitive once again, and we have to go to Brick Memorial, and Coach Curry will certainly have his kids ready. Um, so we're well aware of that. You know, we have a great deal of respect for all the teams in our division. Uh, you know, Ocean Township, you know, and Don Klein does a great job. Him and his coaching staff are very solid. Um, you know, and uh, last year, you know, we were able to play well, and we caught them at the right time. You know, we ended up winning, I think it might have been like 28-6, but they were banged up. They had a number of offensive linemen out. Um and, you know, even, you know, their outstanding quarterback, um, you know, Tyler Douglas was hobbling around on a high ankle sprain and not 100 percent, you know. Um, so the score was a little bit deceiving in terms of, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, this year we don't play them early. We play them late in the season at Ocean. Mm -hmm. So we know that that's going to be, a, a, you know, a challenging game. Uh, Tom's River South. Um, last year, you know, we lost to them uh, late in the season uh, in a very close game, a driving rainstorm at the end of the game, which I don't think helped either team. But, um, you know, once again, um, you know, Tom's River South, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, the new coach, uh, head coach, you know, Matt Martin, who was on their staff. Um, but, you know, I'm sure we'll, you know, have his own identity and his own, you know, uh, blueprint, uh, you know, with what he's going to do with uh, Tom's River South for the you know coming years um, and he'll do an outstanding job and we expect that to once again be a very competitive you know close football game you know coach Zidanowitz and, and, and Brick Township and you know it's Brick and you know we're going to have our hands full with that game that's going to be a battle um, you know where it's going to be another 50-50 game uh, you know, and then Neptune, who, you know, Coach Cav and I are both familiar with in terms of their personnel. And, you know, and Coach Duffy does a really good job there. And he's, you know, provided some continuity the last two years for them. And, um, you know, the, the, the Neptune kids are, you know, uh, they've got, you know, speed, they've got size, um, you know, athletic ability. Um, you know, they, they cause matchup problems for you offensively and defensively, uh, you know, so playing that game at Neptune uh, in the middle of the season, you know, we know that's going to be an absolute battle as well. So, um, you know, there are no uh, games that I sit there on our schedule and say, uh, you know, well, I think we're going to be OK in this game. Mm -hmm. um, no, uh, you know, but I also don't feel there's a game there that we're going to be like a heavy underdog either. I think we're going to be in a lot of really competitive, good football games this year, which I think is just going to add to the excitement level. Um, you know, where our fans and our parents and our student body are going to be able to show up and say, wow, that was an awesome football game. And just hopefully we're able to come out on top. So we'll see. Coach, when you talk about your division, a couple different things, five different things come to my mind. Parity, caught at the right time. I've heard that from numerous coaches um, in your division. 50-50 uh, games, close games, and it comes down to three plays in this division. And you could probably agree to most of those things that that this division is something probably that you like playing in because it can go either way, right? Any of the games? Yeah, I I think you know. Listen, putting the divisions and schedules together is a very difficult task, and you know, um, 
I don't claim to have all of the right answers, but I know one thing, they got this division right uh, in terms of uh, parity and, and, and whatnot. Um, you know, it's, you're not going to have divisional games where you're going to see one team winning 42 to seven. No. You know, uh, where one or one team runs away with the division and goes undefeated mm -hmm. while, you know, and wins every single game by 35 points. That's not going to happen. So, um, you know, when you see competitive football games, it's good high school football. Mm -hmm. That's what it's supposed to be. And if you see that, then you know that they did a nice job in terms of putting a division together. Um, you know, and I, and I think as a coaching staff and as a coach, I mean, listen, snowball games where you're blowing somebody out 49 7 it's not fun um you know you'd much rather the competitor and you would much rather be in that 21 14 or 28 mm -hmm. 21 type of game uh where yeah we're all competitive we want to win there's no doubt about that but you know uh there's something that could be said uh you know for for just playing good high school football and uh, you know, having a competitive game and the experience that those kids on both sides of the ball, whether it's the opponent or it's us at Red Bank Regional, what our kids all take away from that and the life lessons that they're learning as we go through that. I think most of our coaches, uh, you know, I mean, all of our coaches would agree to that. All right, coaches, what can we be expecting? What are you guys going to run offensively and defensively? Well, Coach Cav, you can address the offense. Go ahead. All right, offensively, uh, we'll be a we'll be a spread team. Um, we'll try to spread people out, put speed in space, um, and uh, just create mismatches that way. Um, you know, we've got some certain staple plays um, that we're going to run every game, and then we're going to take a look at what the defense is in and make an adjustment based on that. Sometimes, so you know, um, tempo can be slow, can be fast. You know, but we, we just want to put our kids in the best position to make some plays. Um, and I, I think we have some kids that can do that. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely excited about where we're going with our offense. Yeah, we're going to talk about the players in a second. Coach, defensively, what, what are you guys running? Defensively, we're going to be multiple. You know, we'll be uh, in multiple fronts. Um, you know, I mean, for years I've been, you know, a 4-3 person. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we will be in, you know, some sort of a 4-3 look. Uh, but we will be multiple and we'll give people different looks and different fronts and it'll be game plan, uh, you know, week to week in terms of who we're going against and what type of offense we're, we're facing and, you know, how we'll adjust accordingly as a coaching staff. Um, but, you know, we have uh, this year, I think, more depth than we've had uh, a year ago. And uh, so, you know, we'll be able to survive if we have a couple of injuries. We'll be able to survive if we have, you know, somebody that can't play that week. Um, you know, we'll be able to put a backup in who can go out there and is a varsity player and, and will do a good job. So, um, you know, I think that, you know, with with that depth, it allows us to be a little bit more multiple uh, on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively in terms of what we're going to do. All right, Coach, love this part. I added top positional groups. Uh, I think it's important not just to have a star athlete at a position, that, but to have groups of people – no, there's nothing better when you're doing individual group and you have three, four dudes that are interchangeable, that are interchangeable. And I did some things. You have a lot of guys competing for positions, competing for positions you have. All right. And I'm not going to hold you to who's starting and all that because you have a wealth of, of stuff. So I did research on Red Bank and the top positional groups for offense, defense and special teams. I want to go over and one at a time. Offensively, I couldn't make up my mind. I usually do backfield, receivers. I'm going to just say skilled position. I hope you're comfortable with that, guys. I couldn't make a decision because I just see a whole bunch of guys that you're going to have pieces with offensively, Coach Cav. And let me just re read off the guys here. Kion Martin. Uh, and let me just say everybody's basically a junior unless, like you say, they're a senior. How's that? Kion yeah. Martin, a receiver. Lamar Hicks a wildcat guy that you could do so many things. Gunner Ekstrom, I love that kid. I love that he can do everything and probably sell hot dogs at halftime that dude. Pierce Olsen is a senior quarterback. Liam Stack, a big tall wide receiver junior. Jasir Jones. Remember that name, guys out there. I know you know who it is, but Jasir Jones, the running back, Miles Moore, 
uh, Kyle Baranis, a, a bruising dude that I'm hearing out there, and I hope I want to hear a little bit about it. And Alex Choback, a quarterback, a junior. You have a bunch of guys when you go to Indy. I mean, it's not just one person. It's a group of guys you have. I think the strength of your team is the wealth of numbers you have at skill position. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, you know, um, it's it's sort of been a really good situation um, that we have right now with guys that can go and catch the football, but they can also run the ball. You know, we could get, you know, three, four guys to run the football, but they could also go vertical on you. So um, that's a good thing. Um, you know, Lamar, uh, Lamar is, is a really – really athletic, explosive kid, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, and then you had on the other side, Kayam, who can run by it pretty much anyone, you know, if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. um, and then you got Gunner. Uh, Gunner might be one of the hardest practicing kids in our program. Um, if kids are coming up, they need to look up to Gunner because of the way he practices every single day. But um, it shows on the field. And we're hoping that this year he has a really breakout year. Um, you know, Pierce Olsen uh, had a really pretty good year last year, um, his first real varsity experience. And then now, you know, we expect him to take a really great leadership role. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Alex Choback, another quarterback, you know, that, I mean, the kid's got a cannon. He can throw it a mile. And, uh, you know, those guys are really competing against each other. Um, and, and they have a good attitude with each other, uh, which is great. Um, like you said, our tailback spot, we've got three or four kids that can that can carry it um, with Jasir, Miles Moore, um, with uh, Kyle Baranis, and Evan Eckerstrom. Any of those kids could get the ball and hurt you. Mm -hmm. um, they're very different backs, uh, but they're they're all they're all pretty good with that. Um, so I mean, our skill guys, you know, with Liam Stack, uh, he's a slot receiver. Uh, Sam Dengler. He's another guy that's going to be a slot receiver for us that is going to compete for playing time. Um, yeah. Brady Carroll. Uh, we've got uh, Sean Forbes. I mean, some some. we've got a guy. We've got a lot of guys that could go in and play for us right now. So that's a good situation. So I was kind of right. You have a lot of numbers. Um, guys have ownership in your offense. Because, I mean, those guys, but we, we just rambled off. I could see them playing – at any part of the game, at any time, with confidence still with your offense at all. Good. How about defense, Coach? I did this now. I just saw your DBs. I think you got three dudes back. Um, Gunnar Ekstrom, Liam Stack, and Jasir Jones. And to add in Miles Moore, I've heard that name from so many people, and also Sam Dangler at DB. Yeah. I think that's your strength, no? Good. Yeah, we have a number. I mean, you know, we have three kids that saw significant playing time last year as juniors at the varsity. Or, you know, I, excuse me, as so, uh, sophomores at the varsity level. You know, and they're and they're all back uh, this year as juniors. So you know, having three kids that saw significant playing time as, as sophomores makes a difference. Um, you know, and then we just have depth there. You know, um, we have enough depth that we were able to take. You know, uh, one of our seniors, uh, Brendan Lachlan, who's an outstanding leader and a great football player and started every game last year for us as a defensive back. And we were able to move with a linebacker for this year uh, to address some depth and some needs that we had there because of the athletic ability and the strength and numbers that we feel we have with our defensive backs. Mm -hmm. So, um you know, it's it's uh, it's great. We've got a number of kids back there that are competing for playing time, um, and will and compete for playing time. And they'll allow us to rest other kids at various points during the game. Any kids that we do have that are going uh, both ways, um, you know, we will uh, be able to take them out and either rest them offensively or defensively, uh, which we also think will allow our special teams to be a little bit better as well. But yes, defensive back is. Uh, you know, certainly a, uh, one of the strengths of, uh, uh, you know, of our uh, defense for this upcoming season. I love hearing all these different names that we're saying, because when you took over the program last year, you had to get to know the players. Now that you know the players, you're finding roles for them and they're fitting in real well. Special teams. This is going to stun you, I think, because I know you have Lamar Hicks as a returner. 
and I don't think anybody's going to kick the ball deep to him. I'm sure just here Jones can can do returns, and I wouldn't be surprised if Kion Mort was back there too to scare people from kicking it deep. But I think your kickers. I like John Carlo Dutai um, as a kicker. And also this guy, I, I can't pronounce his name because people are laughing at me when I say it, but Nick Gandolfo, a punter. I hope I said it right. Hopefully you don't use that name a lot. That means you're punting a lot during the season. So that's that. But but those two kickers are very steady guys. I know John Carlo Dutai has experience out there and has a good yeah. reputation. But I do know you have returners too, but I don't want to talk about them. We talked about them. Talk about the kickers. Talk about the kickers. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, you know, John Carlo is a kid who's going to be his third year kicking on the varsity. Uh, you know, he's a uh, kid who has a strong leg, good work ethic, um, you know, has been a varsity kicker his sophomore and junior year. Now he's a senior, um, you know, and he's a kid that our coaching staff has a lot of confidence in. Uh, we expect him to have a big season for us. Um, and then Nick Gandolfo uh, is a two-way lineman for us that's an O-line, D-line kid. Um, uh, extremely intelligent, solid work ethic, but he's got a real big leg as a punter. Um, you know, his ability to get uh, height and uh, hang time, you know, as well as some distance on his punts. Um, you know, he punted for us last year as a sophomore, um, you know, and had some games where he really crushed the ball and did a great job and changed the field position for us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and we expect that to be even better this year, uh, especially now that he has a, a, you know, a year under his belt and also has you know, spent the summer, you know, going to some uh, different kicking camps and working with some kicking coaches and just improving his technique. So, um, you know, we have, uh, we have a lot of confidence in both of our kids and we feel that they can be difference makers for us this upcoming season. Coach, we go to these clinics. It's usually a special teams clinic, and they always say your number one offensive play is a punter. I, I never got excited punting the ball like on the first play of a game, but but you know, changing the field position with those two kickers you have, you got to feel pretty good about the season. So I was okay with my top positional rank, uh, top top positional groups. I have a drone flying over your program. I know everything, All right, Coach. I want to hear about your football players now, returning players, maybe sleeper guys that I may need to know about or will know about as the year progresses. So let's hear some names. Well, you know, I mean, we have a number of, let, let's face it, the um, those are the kids that are the heart and soul of, the, of your football team. You know, those are the kids that don't always hear their name over the loudspeaker, but they do all the dirty work and get you the W on Friday night, you know. Um, so for a lot of us, you know, I think that's just some of your O-line guys, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, some of our linebackers, uh, you know, a couple of our D-line kids, you know, um, we have depth. We have kids that are going to compete for spots, you know, uh, defensively. Um, you know, we have uh, some linebackers, you know, inside and like Matt Kelly, and Evan Eckerstrom, and uh, you know, and and uh, Chris Leahy, uh, you know, who are all going to compete for 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 time. Uh, we've got you know some seniors, uh, you know, like defensive back Mark Pines, and uh, you know, we've got Kenny Flores, who's a senior uh, outside linebacker for us that's going to compete. Mm -hmm. uh, Brendan Lachlan, who's one of the leaders of our team and is going to outside linebacker, you know, from uh, defensive back. Um, and you know, Brendan's as solid as they come. His older brothers played here at Red Bank Regional. Um, you know, defensive line. You know. Um, you know, we've, we've got, uh, you know, kids like uh, Brendan Gerbert, who's a pass rusher, Griffin Egan, who's a, who's a pass rusher, uh, you know, and a run stopper as well. Um, you know, Nick Gandolfo, you know, and those guys saw time last year as sophomores, you know, so they're all back. Um, you know, we've, we've got, um, you know, Gavin Lisko, who's back as well, who's a wrestler and, and, and is a scrappy football player uh, that's going to compete. Um, you know, Alex Choback and Kyle Baranis at linebacker. Um, so we have depth. We have a number of kids that are going to push one another. Uh, Maurice Gittens and, uh, you know, and Sean Forbes are, you know, athletic safeties that are six foot three and can run. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, whether, you know, some of these guys, there's just not enough positions, you know, so some of them may end up earning a starting spot and others will be 
immediate backups that we'll be able to, as a coaching staff, be comfortable rotating them in. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, they'll make our special teams that much better. And let's face it. I mean, you know, coach Davis as a former head coach, you know, how valuable all three phases of the game are, Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, for, you know, you don't want to take a break on special teams and just rest kids, you know, we'll have what we think is some solid players, you know, playing for us, uh, in all three phases. Um, you know, and then I'll let Noel talk a little bit about, um, you know, offensively, um, you know, where we're, we're at, but I mean, you know, um, and Maurizio too, uh, you know, Maurizio Cibrian, uh, you know, can, can, you know, play defensive back or wide receiver for us. He's a senior, uh, you know, who will provide, uh, you know, some, uh, you know, continuity back there. It's a second year working with our coaching staff. Um, you know, so we, we just feel real comfortable with where we're at from that standpoint. Uh, Noel, do you want to talk a little bit about yeah. some of our offensive, you know, unsung yeah. guys that are, you know, really the, the, the keys to our success? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, um, number one, I want to give credit to Coach Mass. Uh, he's our offensive line coach, and he's one of the best coaches I've been around um, with getting guys prepared to play. Um, last year, we had some, some guys um, <laughs> that are returning to us now um, that have had experience on the offensive line, Nick Andolfo. Um, played a lot of football for us, did a great job um, at tackle. Um, we don't know exactly where, where they're going to fit in, where they're going to play, but they're going to play. Um, Brendan Gerbert, another one, played a lot of football for us. Hank Del Pra, um, played a lot of football, and Griffin Egan. Um, now, after that, we've got some guys that are really, uh, we're really high on competing for jobs. Michael Polloway, uh, he's a senior. Um, Greg Devine, also a senior. Um, they're going to be competing up front. Uh, Chris Lay, he's a junior. He's going to be. Um, he's another one that's right in the mix there for some for some valuable playing time. Um, and some young guys that uh, that are going to be stepping up for us. Uh, Matt Peduto, um, he's competing for an offensive line spot, and Alex Kostic. Um, so those guys have been really, um, you know, really looking good throughout the summer through the, the uh, weight room sessions. And uh, we're, we're really looking forward to seeing them progress um, and Coach Nash will get them prepared. Good. How about um, any other guys out there, Coach? Any other guys, well, maybe skill kids? Um, yeah, pardon? yeah we, have, we, have, we have a couple sophomore kids that have opened our eyes early on this summer. We'll see how they do. You know, once we get in the camp and we put the pads on and, you know, the competition increases and whatnot. Um, but, you know, uh, Quinn Neese, uh, you know, who um, Quinn Neese is a heady, uh, you know, sophomore who can play defensive back for us, uh, could play corner or safety, uh, could play slot receiver, can play quarterback. Um, you know, he's a really, really bright uh, football uh, mind, and he has great instincts out there on the field. Uh, other sophomore, too, Ryan Swords, uh, as a linebacker, has been, um, you know, just runs really well sideline to sideline for a linebacker. He's got those kind of instincts that you don't want to coach him too much because you want him just instinctively to keep mm. doing what he's doing. <laughs> Um, because nine out of 10 times he gets there and he's going to make the play. So, um, you know, those are just two kids that we uh, think, you know, have potential to compete, push some of our veteran older kids uh, in practice. Um, But once again, you know, we went into last year, um, you know, kind of, you know, just relying on our old or seniors and some of our older kids. And, you know, as the uh, summer went along and then as we got into the fall, we had more and more sophomores step up and impress mm-hmm. us. And maybe they weren't ready to start week one, but they by week four, they were ready um, and they were pushing people for playing time. So, um, you know, we saw that firsthand a year ago and we think, you know, that same type of opportunity will present itself and worst case scenario, they're going to provide great depth for us, um, you know, you know, for this upcoming season. So um, can't wait to be a part of it. Can't wait, you know, for the community to be able to come out and spend Friday nights, you know, throwing on a pair of jeans and some sweat, a sweatshirt and come and watch uh, the Bucks play football. So uh, we think it'll be uh, entertainment, entertaining and, and, and a great atmosphere uh, for everybody involved. Coach, I, like I said before, you do a great job. 
of getting a lot of people involved in your program um, wherever you're at and you're doing it here you're building something special all right and I and I, I hear it from your assistant coaches especially Co- coach Noel um, and, and players and people in the community you got something going real special um, you know who knows what it's going to be like during the season you can't you can't predict wins and losses you know but you've been on the winning end quite a bit so money has it if I was a, ga- a bet man that you're going to get them going this year so I want to thank you guys for coming on the show. Um, I, I learned a lot about Red Bank today. Excited and know that you guys are going to be a pretty good program, not just for this year, in the future, but let's worry about this year, this year. You're very young with experience. I like that. And you have a lot of numbers, guys that you're you're familiar with after your second year going into your second season. So um, short football report will be on your sidelines with Scotty Stump and myself. And if you need anything, let me know. Are you going to have that shirt on? I'm trying to get Scott to adapt to me. See, you got to, you got your talent's got to adapt to me. So I'm, he will not wear a wine shirt though. He won't. So I got to adapt to him. I think so. We'll see. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much, and I'll t- I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot, Rob. Thanks, Rob. All right, now we're going to talk to three Red Bank football players, seniors, outstanding football players on the field, which everybody knows but even better off the field that a lot of people are probably excited to hear because that's more important guys. And that's what you are. So you're good ambassadors for the football program. And let's talk a little red bank football. Can we do that? Let me, let me introduce you guys first and then five questions. Let's go right in there. Seven minutes, maybe eight. If one of you takes it, go a little bit longer with that, but let's have fun with it. So let's talk up top right there. We have the outstanding senior quarterback, Pierce Olson. Pierce, yes, sir. there you go. Thank you. To the right, we have the outstanding outside linebacker senior, Brandon Lachlan. Brandon, and on the bottom, no. last but not least, we have the um, the always a threat to catch a touchdown anywhere he's at, at receiver and safety, senior Kyam Martin. Good. So, what an introduction. I better get some money when you get those NIL deals. You hear me? Because I'm beefing you up. I want five, ten percent. I'm not asking a lot. All right, good. I don't know, all right. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm a tough one. All right. Five questions I have, and I know everything about Red Bank football. And this is important. This is just as important, these questions, than you throwing a fade pattern, Pierce, th- uh, this year. So here we go. Are you ready? Yes, sir. I don't know if you're ready, but these are tough questions. You ready? Number one. Who's the funniest dude in the football program? That's who I need to know. That's my first thing. Who's the funniest dude? And then I know it's not Coach Fallon, but who's yeah, the funniest? No, it's no. Hank. It's Hank. It's Hank. Hank yeah. Delpre? Hank Delpre? Hank Delpre. Hank Delpre. Yeah. He's funny? He's pretty mm-hmm. funny. So the center is making everybody laugh, huh? Yeah. Hank, Hank got some jokes. Does he I, really? Always, I'd say Griffin. Griffin? Egan? Yeah, but like not yeah. on purpose. What's going on with those O linemen? Is there any serious oh, no. stuff going on? Oh, no, never. you never. you poor skill guys have to deal with the giggling going on with the linemen. Uh, is there is there a skill kid who's pretty funny? Is Lamar Hicks funny? Is um, Eckerstrom fu- funny? Is somebody else funny? Give me a skill guy who's funny. Mm. Lamar is funny. He's always yeah, Lamar, Lamar is funny. Yeah, he's always goofy. Good. We got to balance it out. Now, do any of those guys make Coach Fallon smile? Yes. Yeah. Every, everybody makes Coach Fallon smile. <laughs> Not really? Everybody everybody smile. Makes him smile. Well, that, well, you know what? There's nothing wrong, guys, with having fun during football. Just know where the time and place is. And the heat in the yeah. moment, when you're in a locker room, sometimes a good joke just kind of makes you, makes you, you know, ease up a little bit, right? In the heat of the moment. Number two, who's the leaders of the team that echoes out a message that the coaching staff wants everybody to know? Maybe it's Kyle Martin. Oh, you do it? Uh-huh. Okay. We got a lot of guys. I feel like all of our captains do a good job of that. Yeah. Like, yeah. when we have lifts, we get kids with the lifts. And, like, as a whole, like, the older guys, like, we don't have a lot of seniors, but yeah. our seniors do echo the messages that need to be sent to the younger guys. And then we've had a lot of 
up and coming upperclassmen. So I did incoming juniors, like guys like Liam Stack, like he's always yeah. young kids. Yeah. And they're always trying to get Safety. their word out, even though they're still like not the older guys yet, but they're growing into the role. Good. Need to grow yeah, we got we got a lot of we got a lot of younger guys, underclassmen that that also do the um their leaders too. How do you guys echo the message? How do you like? What do you do? You just yell out the window, or do you send? Well, like at the end of practice, we have guys like Yam always breaks us down, and we'll echo a message there. And we got group chats within our team where we're like, "You got to get to lift," because yeah. one of the biggest things for us is like just like being as a team. Because we're never gonna, no matter how good an individual is, we're never gonna win mm-hmm. as a team. If we're not working as a team, right. so we try to stay together as much as we can. Well, yeah, can- everybody pushes each other. Communicate. You know, communication is important on the football field and also off the field too. And there's nothing wrong with with kind of having some type of communi- communication process to echo out what you need. That is important. It really is, right? But no Snapchat. I don't do Snapchat. I, I, Snapchat is the worst. I I don't understand it. I mean, when you do Snapchat, you have to have a cartoon character on it. Like yeah, right now, on Snapchat all the time. I did, I did, I did it one time. My daughter goes, "I want you to make Snapchat." So I made it. She looked at it. She goes, "Dad, you're not hot." I made myself look good. I'm like, she "What?" Lied. She lied. Then she made one of me, and I will never show it on social media what I look like with her. She she really made me look bad, but That's I won't crazy. do that. Number four, guys, what is the expectations in your locker room with the coaches away, the players? The players, what are you thinking about this season? Not what the coaches is, are saying, what you guys are saying. So, Brandon, you start first. I think we're just trying to win every game we play. Yeah. No matter what, we're going to focus every week on the game that we're going to play and not look too far ahead. That's important. Good point. Kayam? I think we, like, we just all like just work hard and like just push each other. So we can win our division and win every game, like like Brendo said. Yeah, so I mean, like we just we just work, we just working hard, just putting in extra time. Yeah, just I mean, uplifting everybody. I mean, rightfully so. Expectations are elevated this year because you three and the other guys we talked about earlier in the show. Pierce, give me uh something. Give me another I think, thing. I think the big thing is the most important game is always the next game. It's like the next game. We're looking at the next week, so we're really getting stoked for Mammoth. Mm-hmm. as a team and like it's expected that we're going to go in and do really well this year and like when there's no coaches and it's just the boys in the locker room like i don't know like i mean i can speak for everyone but like we expect that we're going to get a full focus and everyone's like fully bought into this process of football like for us seniors like it's our senior year last year of high school football yeah. we expect really big things and like i expect that all like the underclassmen and everyone else is going to be there to work just as hard and expect just as good of an outcome at the end of the season yeah, I got two two more questions. We're done. Getting back to normal. For the last two years, I mean, we were all affected, but let's focus on you guys. You didn't have a normal off season for two years. You didn't. You didn't. We got lazy. Um, we forgot how we worked at it as a society. We really have. But now we're back to normal. All right, Pierce, tell me how great it was to be around your – being a quarterback, being around your whole team in the off season. How great was it face-to-face? Yeah, off season's huge for us. Like – we have guys come to the field like three, four times a week just to get extra work and like build some relationships and like chemistry, yep. like skill guys. Like I know we'll all be there and like all season's huge. And I know like my, I think like sophomore freshman season got cut short because of COVID. Yeah. So like that off season was weird. Cause like we weren't allowed to like do whatever. Cause we were out of school and we weren't seeing each other as much, but like coming at the end of last season into this season, like, a lot of guys weren't happy with the way our last season ended. Like we wanted to make playoffs, we just barely missed playoffs. Yeah, and I don't think anybody wants that to happen again. So the grind of the off season was really huge for us as a team. Yeah, yeah. Brandon. No, yeah, completely. I mean, we a lot of like the past years of COVID, we like less like lost that like team chemistry building period. Right. That like, we got to get this year, which I think is huge for like everyone just to be on the same page, know what the true goal is of the team, just to be the best team we could be. Good. Kayam. Yeah, losing like the um the Kobe year, it was just it was just bad. Like they said it wasn't that much chemistry, but we're good now. Like we have a lot of chemistry. 
a lot of guys is going to show up this season. I think one positive of the COVID era was that we learned to communicate other ways. Yeah. Right. Also, I feel like I feel like the COVID era made us like go harder now. You're right. You're pretty like, Yeah, like yeah, like we had it. Like we didn't really have that much time like prepared, but like, I feel like now we do, and it made us like want it more because we didn't have that. So I, I saw like, so many videos of people walking on the field when we got out of that COVID and we were able to practice in that July two years ago. People kissing the ground on the football field. You really missed it. We all did. Yep, you did. Last question now, guys. I know the answer. I want to hear from you guys. Why is it so special to be playing at Red Bank football under Coach um, Fallon? So, Kayam, you do that. Tell me why it's special to play under Um, Coach Fallon. I think think it's special because Coach Fallon is such a good guy. Like, he he pushes everybody. He's like, like, he's funny. Like he just he just brings like a good vibe to practice and like I don't know it's just being under him is just it's just fun. I, I'm confused about the funny part. He hasn't made me laugh yet in the 20 nah. years I've known him. But we're gonna I'm gonna Fallon. I'm gonna call him later on that. Uh, Pierce, tell me Fallon something. About jokes. <laughs> Playing my last like my last year of Red Bank football is huge for me. Like I'm stoked. My senior season, I got a lot on the line. Like going into college and stuff. Like I know I'm gonna play ball. And I just want to show out, but it's it's cool for me because I know a lot of these other guys on my team. Like I've played for tackle football since I was like five or six years old at Red Bank. So a lot of these guys I've been playing with for years and years and years. Like Brennan's always been on my tackle football team, and like it's weird to imagine a team without him. And like with kids like Lamar and Hank, and I know Yama was there for a few years, and like we've all been playing football together for our whole lives, and now it's like our last year. It feels weird, but like I'm ready to go into it and have a really good season. And about Coach Fallon. I know he sort of knew the Red Bank program, but he's been a great coach for a really long time. Yeah. And we build a really good relationship really fast. And like me coming in as a starter last year, helped me get closer with him. And we've been talking all off season on how to get some guys in the positions that we want them to be in. Mm-hmm. And he's just working really hard to get our team to be good this year. And I think he did a good job of that. Awesome. Brandon, end it right here. Tell me, why is it special to play for Coach Fallon at Red Bank? I mean, playing for Coach Fountain and all the coaches, they're just truly remarkable guys. They know what they're talking about. They just have a good knowledge of football. And, like, even the crowd for, like, Red Bank, like, the atmosphere, it's really crazy and amazing to be a part of. Let me tell you something about Coach Fallon. I've known him for years when he was back at Robinson. All his stops, I mean, I'm a good friend of mine. Um, He's about uniting. He about gets a lot of people involved. He likes to get his coaches all involved. He likes to have an army of people on his team. He likes to team. He wouldn't be very good at a coaching like golf. You know, he needs to have a team. And he, he'll play as many players as it's demanded on his team. He two platoons if he has to, um, and he will. He does that. He likes to, to include a lot of people. And that's, that's a lot about him. He's a special guy. He really is. But him being funny, I don't know. I don't know. So that's my gotcha. question mark with that. That's one of the red. That's one of my question marks of Red Bank football now is how funny is Coach Fallon? Not the athletes. I know you got them, and I know you're gonna you're gonna probably be, the funniest football team in the shore to be honest. With you. Really, I'm gonna put that wow. in there. Good. So hey, wishing you guys the best. Shore football report will be on your sidelines this season without doubt. With Co- uh, Mr. Scott Stump is also with us. You're gonna be in big games because your program's demanding it and you're playing some quality teams. You really are. All right. Wishing you the best. Get this out to all you guys tomorrow. It'll be out tomorrow. And let's see how many views you get on your uh, preview show. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Be good.